Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 27th of December. India's counter-terrorism agency uncovers ISIS inspired module. Afghan president urges firmness in war as new security chiefs take charge. And opposition supporters arrested ahead of Bangladesh election on December 30th. And now for all the details. A day after India's National Investigation Agency arrested 10 people in connection with the new ISIS-like module, a court in national capital New Delhi sent all of them to 12 days remand. The counter-terrorism agency claimed the accused were planning to carry out a series of blasts in the country. India's National Investigation Agency or NIA on Wednesday uncovered an Islamic State or ISIS conspired module after conducting raids at 17 different locations in the national capital New Delhi and northern Uttar Pradesh province. The agency officials said the module was at an advanced stage of planning to carry out a series of blasts in the country. The NIA interrogated 16 persons and recovered large quantity of explosive materials, weapons and ammunition, including country-made rocket launcher, over $10,000 in cash and nearly 100 mobile phones from their possession. After the initial interrogation of the 16 suspect persons, we have decided to arrest 10 persons, 10 accused persons, Questioning interrogation is going on with all the accused and suspects and we ex expect some more arrests later. According to the investigating agency, important political personalities and security installations were their main targets. The NIA officials said that their level of preparation suggested that their aim was to carry out explosions in near future by remote control blasts and fidain or suicide attacks. Moving on, prominent Muhajir leader Nadeem Nusrat has blamed that Pakistani intelligence agencies are behind the assassination of Muhajir political leader Ali Raza Abidi. The former legislator was a fierce critique of Pakistani deep state's undemocratic policies and their blatant interference in civil affairs. Prominent Mohajir leader and voice of Karachi chairman Nadeem Nusrat has claimed that Pakistani intelligence agencies are behind the murder of Mohajir political leader Ali Raza Abidi. Abidi was killed in Karachi, a Mohajir majority city, on Sunday by two bike borne gunmen outside his doorstep when he was returning from his office. Nusrat said that the slain former legislator was a fierce critic of Pakistani deep state's undemocratic policies and their blatant interference in civilian affairs, particularly their role in creating various factions within representative political party of Mohajir's, the Mutahida Kwami movement. And I would like to um, say categorically that Ali Raza Abdi, his assassination was master minded by Pakistani intelligence agencies. And I am 100% uh, confident that they, their hired mercenaries killed Ali Raza Abdi. This has been the practice for a long time. Muhajis have long claimed to have been suffering human rights violations at the hands of a nation which they say does not accept them as their own. Several activists have also raised concern in the past blaming that innocent people from religious and ethnic minorities are subjected to torture, killings and enforced disappearances for raising their voices in the country. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has said that Afghanistan is at a critical stage of the war and the Afghan security forces will come up with more strength and decisiveness in countering terrorism. He made the remarks while introducing new defense and interior ministers. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has said that Afghanistan is at a critical stage of the war and that now is the time that the Afghan security forces will come up with some more strength 
and decisiveness on the battlefield. Ghani made the remarks earlier this week during the introduction ceremony of Asadullah Khalid as Defence Minister and Amarullah Saleh as the Interior Minister. Both the new ministers have been staunch anti-Taliban veterans who have also been major critics of neighbouring Pakistan's Afghan policy. تا زمانی که ما به صلح می رسیم ما با یک جنگ ویران کننده و تحمیلی مواجه هستیم مدیریت و رهبری این جنگ قاطعیت تدبیر و جدیت بیشتر می خواهد امرالله سالی و اسدالله خالد have both headed the National Directorate of Security in the past under the former President Hamid Karzai's government. Ghani's move to reshuffle the security leaders comes at a time when the US has intensified efforts for sealing a peace deal with the Taliban. Bangladeshi police on Wednesday brought arrested supporters and activists of opposition parties to face charges at a court in capital Dhaka ahead of the general election on Sunday. Opposition parties have complained of violent attacks against their workers by ruling party activists and the arrest of candidates on what they said are trumped up charges during the election campaign. Bangladeshi police on Wednesday brought arrested supporters and activists of opposition parties to face charges at the Chief Metropolitan Magistrate Court in Dhaka ahead of the general election on Sunday. Opposition parties have complained of violent attacks against their workers by ruling party activists and the arrests of candidates on what they said are trumped up charges during the election campaign. Several of the detained who were brought to court on Wednesday said they are supporters of the opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party or BNP. Thara Bangladesh, BNP. যত বিরোধী দল যত নেতা কর্মী আছে কাউকে বাসায় থাকতে দিচ্ছেন এবং যাকে যেখানে পারতেছে সেখান থেকে অ্যারেস্ট করে নিয়ে আসতেছে কোর্টে বাংলাদেশে কোনো নির্বাসন হচ্ছে না এটা হচ্ছে বাংলাদেশ থেকে জনগণকে নির্বাসিত করার একটা প্রক্রিয়া প্রাইম মিনিস্টার শেখ হাসিনাস আওয়ামী লীগ which is seeking a third straight term in power has denied accusations of trying to intimidate opposition candidates and journalists Hasina will be coming up against the National Unity Front an alliance of smaller parties including the BNP during the election on December 30th Moving on to news from Nepal Rashtriya Janata Party Nepal has blamed the incumbent government of discriminating the parliament members on the basis of ethnicity The remarks by the Madhes based party comes after Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli earlier this week asked for a week's time to address the party's demand including the constitution amendment Rajendra Mahato, a senior leader of Rashtriya Janata Party Nepal or RJPN, has blamed the incumbent government of discriminating the parliament members on the basis of ethnicity. Mahato, during the first day of the third session of the parliament on Wednesday, blamed the government led by Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli of discrimination referring to the delay in the release of a jailed member of parliament who he claimed was dominated for being a Madhesi. The ongoing winter session of Nepal Parliament is considered as a bill session and its major task is to amend or replace laws inconsistent with the constitution. Ma banchu yo tesro adhiveshan ho. Yo adhiveshan ma janta bata nirbachit bhayeka sansad basnu parcha ki pardaina. Kailali bata nirbachit bhay raheka to tharu ko chhora resam chaudhari यो हाउस में प्रश्न प्रश्न पर जाके पढ़ देना कि न यो हाउस में आए ना आंदोलन करे हो थारू आंदोलन करे हो अधिकार को लागी अरे आंदोलन त्याग कॉले करे ना This comes after Nepal's Prime Minister K P Sharma Oli recently asked for a week's time to address Rashtriya Janata Party's demands, including the Constitution Amendment. This came after the RJP and reminded the premier about the understanding that the party had reached with him 9 months ago in return for their support. The train services from Banihal to Baramulla in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province have proved to be a lifeline for locals during the ongoing harshest period of winters in the valley. Thousands of passengers use the train services every day to reach their destinations.
as the ever-intensifying cold wave continues to throw life out of gear in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. The train services from Banihal to Baramulla in Kashmir Valley have proved to be the sole lifeline for the locals. The services on the nearly 84-mile long rail link start at 7 a.m. every morning and continue till 8 p.m., thereby helping the students, employees and tourists in reaching their destinations on time in their harsh weather conditions. Thousands of passengers use the train services every day as they are cheaper than other modes of transport and as the highways get closed due to snowfall and landslides in the valley during winter months. So, as we know that the train is an important mean of transport in the world. If we talk about Kashmir, so it's a jiggler van of Kashmir, especially, most especially in the winter hours when we see the uh, roads are blocked, the somos, whatever it may be on the roads, so roads are not available and there is only one main transport, that is the uh, railway tra transport. The railway link in Kashmir passes through difficult terrain of thick forests, deep gorges and inaccessible steep mountains. The trains have inbuilt heating systems to help moderate the temperatures during the harsh cold days and wide windows to offer a panoramic view of the valley. Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama on Wednesday concluded his three-day teaching session in India's northern town of Bodh Gaya. The spiritual leader during the session gave teachings which included 37 practices of the Bodhisattva, an important text which gives instruction on how to attain enlightenment. Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama on Wednesday concluded his three-day teaching session in India's eastern pilgrimage town of Bodh Gaya. The devotees converged at Kal Chakra ground to listen to sermons by the spiritual leader. Dalai Lama gave teachings which included 37 practices of the Bodhisattvas, an important text which gives instructions on how to follow the Bodhisattva path. His Holiness always talks about love and compassion and for me um, his teachings are always about transforming our ordinary lives into something more special. Dalai Lama has been living in exile in India since fleeing his predominantly Buddhist homeland in 1959 after a failed uprising against Chinese rule. He has set up his seat of power in India's northern Dharamshala town which is regarded as the hub of Tibetan culture. India's holy town of Prayagraj is getting all set for the Kumbh Fair, the largest religious gathering in the world. Authorities are erecting temporary bridges, around 600 mass kitchens and war stands for the festival in the holy town that will host millions of people from 15th of January. Mounted on elephants and bodies smeared in ash, thousands of Hindu seers were seen arriving in the North Indian hill town of Prayagraj on Wednesday for the largest religious gathering in the world, the Kumbh Fair. Apart from several Akhadas or Hindu religious martial groups, the oldest Juna Akhada also reached Prayagraj with seers mounting elephants, camels and tractors during a grand procession with bands playing music. Another peculiar sight was the arrival of Naga Sadhus or ash-smeared naked ascetics for the huge fair. The pilgrims will bath at the confluence of the Ganges, the Yamuna and the mythical third river, the Saraswati, at the world's largest gathering of nearly 120 million people that will begin on January 15. Devout Hindus believe that bathing in the waters of the Ganges absolves people of sins and bathing at the time of the Kumbh brings salvation from the cycle of life and death. The festival has its roots in a Hindu tradition that says the god Vishnu rested a golden pot containing the nectar of immortality from demons. In a 12-day fight for possession, four drops fell to earth in the cities of Prayagraj, Haridwar, Ujjain and Nasik that share the Kumbh fairs as a result. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline. And follow us on Twitter at S Asia Newsline. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.